What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I want to take a look at the Galveston Giant, Jack Johnson, and the Boilermaker, Jim Jeffries. They fought each other 1910, July 4th, Reno, Nevada. And the thing about it, Jim Jeffries had already retired. He was 300 pounds. He was called out of his alfalfa farm because Jack Johnson was defeating all the white fighters. And his country wanted so desperately to have a white hope. Someone to take back the biggest prize in boxing at that time was the World Heavyweight Championship title. So they had to go in their closet and pull out an old fighter named Gentleman or the Boilermaker Jim Jeffries. But I want to take a look at Jim Jeffries for a moment to see what he did to deserve this unbelievable negotiation tactic that was used in order to get the most money of this deal. And remember, he had already retired. He was undefeated, but he had a record at that time of 19 wins, one loss, 16 knockouts, and he was stopped one time. He was stopped by Jack Johnson. But his name was James Jackson Jeffries. He was born April 15, 1875 in Carroll, Ohio. He died March 3, 1953. He was 77 years of age at the time of his death. He stood six foot. He was a heavyweight and had a 76 and a half inch reach. And he was in a ring with fighters such as Hank Griffin. Joe Choinsky. For the Black Prince, Peter Jackson, towards the end of his career. Mexican Pete Everett. Tom Sharkey. Fought him fight twice and defeated him twice. Tom Sharkey was known as the Sailor Man. James Corbett. They called him Gentleman Jim Corbett. He became the World Heavyweight Champion in 1892 when he knocked out John O'Sullivan in 21 rounds. New Orleans it was called the Carnival of Champions. He defeated Bob Fitzsimmons for the World Heavyweight Championship belt. Then he defeated him in a rematch. Knocked him out both times. Gus Rulin and Jack Johnson. Those are the main opponents on his resume. But as for Jack Johnson, known as the Galveston Giant, he was born March 31st, 1878 in Galveston, Texas, and he died June 10th, 1946. He was 68 years of age at the time of his death. He resided in Raleigh, North Carolina. He was on his way to check out Joe Lewis and Billy Kahn, the second fight. It's alleged that he was driving really fast and he fell off a cliff. He was upset because he wanted a sandwich at a local diner. And they made him go to the back of the diner to pick up the sandwich. But Jack Johnson was not loved in this country after he lost his title in 1915 to Jess Willard. That fight took place in Havana, Cuba. So who knows exactly what really happened? But he was six foot and had a 74 inch reach, fought from 1878 to 1931. Had a total fight career of 75 total bouts, fought, uh, 54 wins, 11 losses, 35 knockouts. He was stopped six times. But take a look at his resume. Fought Homer Smith and Jack Thompson Fireman Jim Flynn, twice. Battling Jim Johnson, Frank Moran, Bear Cut Wright, Jess Willard, who he lost the title in 1915, 26 rounds. Roughhouse Ware, James J. Jeffries, Tommy Burns, took the title from him in Sydney, Australia, 1908. And he would knock him out, and the cameras would shut off because. America thought that they can fool the public 
And that show exactly what happened. Philadelphia Jack O'Brien would be a draw. Joe Grimm and Joe Jeanette fought them 10 times. Young Peter Jackson, Black Bill, Sam Langford, fought him in 1906. Denver Ed Martin, Sam McVeigh and Sandy Ferguson, as well as Frank Childs, Joe Butler, Sit on those names for one moment. Jack Johnson had faced Jim Jeffries. July 4th, 1910, Reno, Nevada. Johnson weighed 208 pounds and Jeffries was 227 pounds. Now, Jeffries lost 100 pounds. His weight was listed at 300 pounds when he was asked to come out of retirement. For the World Heavyweight Championship, contest. It was Jack Johnson's fifth title defense. The announcer was Billy Jordan and it was scheduled for 45 rounds. Now, the, the negotiations for this fight was amazing. Now, the thing is, the car check originally read the winner received 75% and a loser would win 25% of $101,000. And that's how confident Jack Johnson was. But Jack Johnson accepted that agreement because they wanted to get Jim Jeffries in the ring. And Tech Vickard had promised Jack Johnson a bonus. Now, one week before the fight, the former heavyweight champion, gentleman Jim Corbett, who was acting as Jeffrey's accountant, I guess, who was formerly a bank teller, And he felt as though Jeffries really didn't have a chance in this fight. So he wanted him to earn a little bit more money and a guarantee. So he changed the agreement and he wanted 50-50. He wanted a split 50-50 agreement between both men. Now here you have Jack Johnson who was the world heavyweight champion. Jim Jeffries had drew the color line, said he would never defend his title with a black fighter. But now he's going to fight a black fighter and asking for 50-50%, and he came out of retirement. He was 100 pounds overweight. And Jack Johnson is supposed to oblige by that. Well, Jeffries turned around, and now he wants 60-40%. Jack London, Stanley Ketchell, Sam Langford, Jim Corbett, John O'Sullivan, Jake Kilwain, Bob Fitzsimmons were all at ringside. So they decided to give each fighter a $10,000 bonus to sign for the agreement. And where the contract was originally 75% for the winner and 25% for the loser, Jeffries didn't have the confidence. Because if he did, he would have accepted that agreement. So these two men would get it on. And the fight took place in Reno, Nevada. And it shows you the manipulation and the greed that these men had. The only thing Jack Johnson got out of that fight that night, he had the chance to beat the brakes off of gentleman Jim Jeffries or Boilermaker. Because not only did he get less money, 
but he turned the world upside down because his defeat over Jeffries caused little black boys to get tortured. Every time a little black boy was seen in the street, he would be grabbed, held in a full Nelson position. And the father of a little black, a white boy would beat that little black boy after death. They would throw him on the ground and spit at him, kick him while he was down and find another one. Houses being tortured, men were being hung. And Jack Johnson would get the short end of the stick. Both men received $10,000 bonus. Jeffries received $66,666. Johnson received $50,000. I'm going to repeat that. Jeffries received $66,666. Johnson received $50,000. It was in front of a screaming crowd of 15,760 spectators. And it was the first time a newly built arena was built for one single event. That fight was that popular. And it reminds me of James Braddock and Joe Lewis, 1937. But only James Braddock got 10%, but he got it for 10 years. So no matter what Joe Lewis earned, he would make 10% of that total earning. And Jeffries who wasn't even thinking about coming back, was pulled out of retirement. Not by Jackson. Not by Johnson, but by the white establishment. And he earned 600. I mean, that's really amazing. 66,666 dollars. Johnson, $50,000. I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. And the world was turned upside down. The Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistigo Series. All great fights and all great fighters. Will never be forgotten on my channel. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Salute. Text figure. Shoot businessman. And he was a crook. You see, Jack Dempsey was supposed to fight Jess Willard. The contract was already written in stone. Text record convinced Jack Dempsey. not to fight him. And he used this fight as an excuse because he claimed he didn't want to have this happen in the city of Jersey. This place was tortured and it was a riot. But that wasn't the true reason. Harry Wills was stuck. Tex Rickard got out of that contract because he had a stipulation in the contract. It had to be an obscene reason. And that reason was not obscene. Peace.